Hello folks, this is Jamil so for Gunstruck Reviews. We're here in Phoenix, Arizona at the headquarters of Enlo Custom Gums with Marty. How you doing, Marty? Good. Now, before we start, I'd like to ask you to please like this video, share this video, and subscribe to the channel so we may continue to bring you the content that you guys like. Marty, today we're going to talk about the Luth AR MCA22 stock. Okay. Which is, uh, you already had a chance to look at it mm -hmm. and see how lightweight it is and how cool it is. And we're going to talk about the installation process on how to take your normal 1022 like this. Well, this is not normal because it has a Picatinny rail and the barrel had been cut and threaded for a A2 flash hider. So, but the Ruger does sell a model that is similar to this mm -hmm. with their own proprietary flash hider on it. So, here it is, it's the uh, rifle, and I'm gonna, we're going to discuss the techniques to put it on the stock and to how to take it out of here, and the things you need from Luth AR. Uh, for example, this special spacer is for a standard barrel. So if you're using a bull barrel, you don't need this. It comes uh, separate, so you need to either add it on or not use it at all. So And also they recommend that you use their uh, screw that they supply. That they provide, yeah. Yeah, but it's kind of interesting. Uh, we built another 1022 before. Mm -hmm. They didn't provide a screw. And you know how much of a pain in the ass it is to find a freaking 1022 screw <laughs> out there? Because, you know, like you said in a previous video that you don't sort of trust screws from a hardware store. No, uh, I, I, I really wouldn't. But at the same time, you know, uh, there's not a huge amount of pressure on that, but sometimes they if they're providing the screw, it's cut to length, right? So yep. they, they've designed, even if they're buying a standard screw, they've designed the stock for that screw, right? Uh, a 1022 stock, a, a standard a standard uh, screw in a 1022 stock is one of those things that uh, it's made for the gun. If I go grab something and let's just say, let's just say it had a dimension that was a little off, like say a, a millimeter or something, well, you go to bottom it out, there's gonna be a problem. In which case, that was what we were running into with uh, hardware store screws and a, uh, and a uh, uh, red dot sight, so yeah. Yep, and, and that's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. And um, I was gonna say, this. Uh, there's a couple of tricks in order to... Um, disassemble the gun. Disassemble yeah. the gun. Specifically, I'll have Dave take a big close up here. Look at that dent there. Here, I'm gonna bring it closer for you guys to see it. Here, here. No, Dave, that's not the way it's done. No, it's not the way it's done. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> he's laughing back there because um, there's a big dent caused by the, they will do a close up later. Uh, there's a big dent caused by the safety if it's either on or off mm -hmm. on the stock. If you try yanking this thing out, you're, it's gonna- you're, you're gonna damage the wood, yeah. You're gonna damage the wood, especially, this is not a piece of wood that is more than Kindle, I mm -hmm. think, you know, this is just a standard 1022 stock. This one happens to be very old. I got it at a gun show and gave it to my friend Mark and he's had this for a while. But um, it's, we're gonna learn a couple of things from you, a couple of tricks and the pros and the cons of those tricks, <laughs> okay? So here is lock back, Marty, there you go, buddy. There we go. Let's do it. Okay. So, you can see here, just from some of the view of the camera, right where I'm pointing the screwdriver, there's a nice little dent here on the side of the stock here. It's also a dent on the other side, on the opposite side. So, we're tr this thing is meant to be disassembled right in the middle. Now, Emil kind of showed me a little trick I that I had never seen before, which is to dry fire it. Um, you can dry fire it if you want to, but that's not recommended on rim fires, and the reason why is because you can damage the chamber. Uh, we don't want to damage the chamber because the firing pin is actually lined up with the edge of the chamber. So if you do dry fire it, um, bear in mind, there really shouldn't be anything, but uh, we, we actually have a, an example here to kind of work on later that uh, has a, a, another gun that was dry fired and of course uh, had, had damage uh, to the chamber itself. So uh, it, it's not recommended, but uh, what you would do is, is after you disassemble the at least the, the stock screw and the barrel band, because there's a barrel band up here, right? So all we're gonna do is, I wanna do the, uh, the barrel band here first, or well, my screwdriver's a little too small for that, or too big, but uh, so I'll just go ahead and 
pull this screw out. And this thing kind of floats in here. You don't need to really take that thing all the way out. Um, they kind of they kind of sit in there, and then change out my screwdriver tips here. And I'll hold it for you. Yeah, thank you. And we'll just pull off that rear band or the rear front band. And I remember when those bands used to be metal. Now they are polymer. Plastic, yep. And they do break. People might think, oh, it's, you know, don't worry about it. Well, there goes our little nut. We'll grab that. And so from here, right, I'm just going to lift this thing out of here. You can see you can see this thing's perfectly spaced here in order to come right out. But yeah, if one side's sticking out to one uh, one side or the other and you force this, yeah, it, it's going to damage the wood, right? So, it's an unsightly thing. A lot of people aren't very happy if you damage the wood. Now, if it's your own gun and obviously this isn't the greatest stock in the world. It's got a few dings in the lacquer, right? I mean, 22s are kind of one of those things that are made to be beat up anyway. There's not really any value to this thing other than it's a stock. It's there to hold the gun. It's not really. It's not really going to do anything else for us at this point. Um, but that that would be it right there. And so, what we're going to do from here is assemble our Luthay R stock, right? Okay. And, and then we're going to show here. This um, spacer goes in here and gets pushed down. Okay. It has two. Uh, little notches that snap on the inside of the stock and in order to take it out you use a screwdriver in those notches to le leverage it out. Mm -hmm. We're not going to do this because this, we're going to show you how this is done. Marty is, not me. <laughs> I don't have a frog in my pocket. But um, another cool thing is, Marty, that comparing this stock to the Luthayar stock, okay, I don't know if you can see there, the inside of this stock is square. Every mm -hmm. angle is square. Mm -hmm. This one is beveled. Right. And it's beveled for a reason. Right. Marty, the, the what's safety. the reason? Yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to self-center the safety if you push it off in one direction or the other. Yeah. So let's go ahead and do that. Mm -hmm. Let's push the safety okay. like that. And you show them how it self-centers itself okay. because of the taper. Well. And you don't have to worry about oh my goodness, self-centering this mm. thing, it won't go in, yeah, it right. won't go in. And that, that will happen, of course, with the wood stock, where it'll, it'll get stuck where you're trying to stick it in there. Um, so another thing to bear in mind, um, sometimes uh, if you're handling these things, um, just with the receiver, you want to be careful because uh, sometimes these pins like to fall out. Yes. Uh, so by us keeping it upright here, we're, we're actually keeping those pins from falling out. But we've got the safety knocked over to one side. And we're just going to go ahead and place that in there. And there we go. Self-centered. And cool thing, another thing, Marty, mm -hmm. you know, to remind uh, users that this, the receiver doesn't go in straight. Mm -hmm. it, you have to sort of mm -hmm. come with a stock like this. Right. Come you, down yeah, so you have to angle it in, yeah. You have to angle it in. And the cool thing is this this feature, in order to take it out though, mm -hmm. we're gonna have to self-center this again mm -hmm. because in order to take it out, then we have to we don't want to damage right. this brand new stock. Right. And um, and then the last step is is to use the provided mm -hmm. uh, screw screw, which is pretty simple. Right. Now there is a little gap here, front and uh, top and bottom, right? Now that's not really to the detriment uh, of this because the contact portion of the stock is up here. Um, this is a little large, but it's actually, I, I would guess, meant for multiple size receivers, right? But uh, one of the things is is that, uh, like say a Magnum receiver, I don't know if they would fit in here or not. No. But uh, uh but it's not really a big deal that there's a gap back here because all of your contact is going to be up here. Right um, now, the other thing is, is that, um, and something like a wood stock, a gap is actually preferred. Uh, one of the reasons why, not necessarily on a 22, but you would actually want it because recoil can damage wood, and you can actually run into stocks like uh, lever guns are kind of famous for having like split wood back there. But uh, this this gap here, all I'm saying is that it, it's not a big deal. So 
Then we would just run this screw in here. And there we go. And how much should we tighten this uh, screw, Marty? Um, I... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, enough, well, enough for it to... Yeah. Yeah, you gotta make sure that that is slid yeah, open so, there. So there's a little gap on the front and rear. I'm kind of adjusting this here a little bit. Um, there we go. Now, like I, I don't have a I don't have a torque spec for this. I don't know what I don't know that Luth AR recommends one, but I'm kind of just going in here and cranking this by hand. If I but, were going over 30 inch pounds, I'd be surprised. Yeah, um, but it's tight, case, and that's it. Mm -hmm. and, and there you go. Like, of course, like I said before, normally for a normal pencil barrel like this, mm -hmm. you would use the spacer mm -hmm. to close that gap in there. Mm -hmm. But some people like the free floated barrel mm -hmm. and not having a contact on sure. the barrel. Sure. So, but now, why are we doing this and we're not finishing this like this? We're going to go ahead and build our custom, perfect, coolest, mm -hmm. bestest ever. 1022 right. without a single Ruger part. Right. <laughs> okay. So let's go ahead and remove this action from uh -huh. here. Okay. And let's go ahead and build the rifle with our part. Sure. Okay, Marty, here's what we're going to build. We're going to use this, we're going to build the bestest ever um, 1022 by not using any Ruger parts. Okay. Uh, the first things first is the action and trigger group is from Powder River Precision. Mm -hmm. This is called the Rubicon. This is precision made. CNC machine from a billet of aluminum, and this thing is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to use a Briley Raptor stainless steel and aluminum ba fluted barrel. This weighs absolutely nothing. Right. This is amazing. Mm -hmm. 16 inches threaded, mm -hmm. and we're going to be using an Alchin Precision Gun Parts um, compensator that uses a O-ring for fitting. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do that last. And, and of course, the Luth AR stock weighs nothing. Yeah, really. This is, like, actually, I think this weighs more than the whole barrel, I think. Yeah, I don't know about that, but uh, it's, it's pretty obvious that the, this, this sleeve in here is a, it's a, it's pretty cool. Um, so, uh, and, and yeah. contrary to the last time, um, when we built uh, a 1022, mm -hmm that you have to chuck it on the lathe Overhead. and remove, because this thing was like 2,000s or 3,000s. 2,000s oversized. 2,000s yeah. oversized yeah. from that hole, mm -hmm. and did not work at all. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. were either going to damage your receiver, sure. yeah. or we're going to gall or you know mm -hmm. make it ugly. So. Well, we were trying to get a proper fit, and uh, I mean, it's nice that it's oversized. We're really trying to get a tight fit. The downside is, is that uh, if you don't have the tools to do it, uh, you're screwed. So yeah. yeah, and this one's also nice because it's got the the cleaning hole, the the, the ability to put a uh, a rod through the back, right? So that you can uh, so you can actually run a cleaning rod through the back here, right? Uh, as opposed to going in through the muzzle, right? Um, so that that's another cool aspect of this. But uh, really, all we're going to do, I'm going to lock open the bolt here, and uh, obviously make sure the safety's on, right? But uh, yeah, we'll line that up, right? And see how easy that went uh -huh. in, and, and there's no play in there. No, no. This no. thing is nice and tight. Well, I mean, that's the nice thing about these. And there's is a, a for those who are starting and don't know how to do this, um, Marty. There is a little thing here that says up. Up, yeah. You know, so basically it says that this part goes up. Mm -hmm. You know how to do it because you've mm -hmm. done several of these, right. but. Some folks out there might be going up and down, left and right until it fits. Well, you might know, pay attention to the few things. Like, actually, it's kind of nice. This thing actually has the writing on there. It says it actually gives you the torque spec. Uh, Twenty. It says 23 inch pounds. So that's what we're that's what we're going to tighten this down to now. By hand. By hand. You know, 23 inch pounds is not a ton, right? So he doesn't want to go in, but they only want to go in straight. So those are tight screws, but 
Why is that? So that would be in trouble with me, at least anyway, trying to get my torque wrench in here because this thing is not going to fit. So if you have a method of wrenching this in that way, but uh, so the nice thing to understand is, is that 23 inch pounds is not a ton of, of press here, right? So for me to sit here and do this, that's, that's about all I'm giving it. I, I got a little leverage on here, but that is tight, at least tight enough, right? I don't know if uh, they have any sort of special tools to go with this, that would be great, but uh, no, they... I, I'm just trying to make sure everything's consistent. I'm really just using fingertip pressure. That's yep. about all we're trying to do. I am definitely not cranking in that very hard. And then from there, we run around our, our muzzle brake, and this thing has an O-ring on it. I'll but, hold uh, it for you. But imagine it goes right there. It's a little oversized. Yeah, good because this this is what's made for the original. <laughs> remember the old uh, bull barrels uh -huh. of yesteryear. Uh -huh. So, well, that O-ring is uh, kind of a nice little thing there because it's. Uh, putting a little tension on this right now I'm not expecting this to, to bottom out all the way right but no you're just gonna yeah I'm kind of just getting it close and then we'll just eyeball it to see where it is but uh, I mean that o-ring is actually gonna keep that thing from loosening up which is kind of nice yeah and then uh, we'll throw our uh, self-centering uh, safety stock back on and angle that and then run it forward a little bit. And now our bolt. Oh, screwdriver. And again, like we said before, there's no such thing as a torque spec for that. No. Well, the polymer Just, will, the, the plastic itself, if I over torque it, the, the plastic itself in the, in the uh, stock here will uh, deform. So I'm just kind of slipping that I'm not I'm not giving it a huge amount of torque if I were doing this I wouldn't I wouldn't be cranking it very hard either but uh, that is our build well let's throw in a scope we have a loophole uh, rim fire mm -hmm. and originally when I did another video with this we had the loophole mark IV mm -hmm. um, rings in it and they were those things weighed a ton I actually weighed the Mark IV rings against these rings that mm -hmm. I found someplace. And they were like 60 grams heavier huh. per ring. It's 120 grams yeah, yeah. extra weight. So let's go ahead and uh, properly um, let's see, we have, we have T10s in here. Okay. There we go. There we go. You just do them by hand and then go in and apply some. How much would torque would that be for the for the rings? I, I wouldn't do much more than 25. In fact, we'll probably go 20. Now, that's not to say that it couldn't take more, but uh, it's the it's the uh, it's the size of the screws themselves that I'm just gonna hit that hard. Yeah. Um, that's it. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Let's go to the range with it and see how lightweight that thing is. <laughs> it is. The build is done. It's pretty cool. Um, yeah. we were just kind of going over some key points about this thing and, uh, you got, at least if you want to adjust it, I kind of set it up for myself here. We can adjust the length of pull, um, with that barrel and the, and the, the weight of the stock, it actually has a very handy kind of balance point right here at the wrist, right? So for me, it's kind of a fun one because like, oh yeah, I can just sit here and pop it like that. But uh, um, this is this is fairly easy to set up and adjust here, um, you know, adjust for your liking. Um, you do have to kind of pull these little screws out in order to adjust the length of pull. But yeah, let's show, yeah, let's show it's, how it's done. It's, uh, it's pretty simple, just take easy. two screws out. Yeah. And, and just uh, adjust one in or and one in or one out. Let's adjust one in. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing is this um, uh, cheek rest mm -hmm. moves one point back if you want to mm. have a screw here and here mm -hmm. or a screw here and here. 
Oh, yeah. Okay. So you can that. actually, yeah. uh, you know, um, go back and forth with it. Mm -hmm. And you set it up for yourself. Let me try it and see how it feels for myself. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You know, I would race, for me, I would mm -hmm. race it because I like to, right. you know, Squeeze it pretty hard, so well, I, would, well I, I had to set up a little longer, so yeah. It, it, and, yeah, and for, for me, I, I'm much more forward on that, but yeah. Yeah, but yeah, you, you have so many teeth <laughs> that each click is an eighth or a sixteenth mm -hmm. of an inch. No, that's too high. <laughs> so you have to sit there going back and forth until you get it to you know where you loosen it, and it clicks. You know, if you see it here, it clicks up and down. Mm -hmm. I went two clicks down, two clicks down, and make it fairly straight too. Made it, make it tight. Don't over tighten. You don't want to damage your. There you go. For me, this is. Mm -hmm. You know, this will be it. And the cool thing about this, it's not only for plinking, guys. Um, I know that a lot of guys, like Marty and I, will probably want to go out with a case of ammo and plink away for a couple of hours <laughs> and shoot at whatever targets we could find. But for competition, for the kind of competition people are using these now, mm -hmm. for steel challenge and stuff like that, this is great because you can move from target to target fairly quickly because this weighs, without the scope, this uh, setup is right under five pounds. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming that with the scope and the rings, Five and a half pounds, maybe five uh, and three quarters. It, def it, it definitely doesn't feel that heavy. So. Yeah. So I mean, that's why I was saying where the balance point is on your wrist right there. It really, it yeah. really moves quite, quite handy. Now, yeah. if you, if you didn't have that Bradley barrel on there, it'd be a different story. Yeah. Um, because that thing is definitely lightweight. Um, you'd, you'd be very front heavy with that gun. In which case, I mean, you know, you could add weight in the back or something. But it, like yeah. I say, its balance point, especially with the way it's set up right there, very nice. Yeah. So. It feels like. Yeah, and of course it takes, because it's a 1022, 1022 magazines, and there's a variety of magazines out there in sizes and shapes and manufacturers that you can use. Uh, this one happens to be, I said they didn't have any Ruger parts on the gun. It does have a Ruger magazine. So, um, because this is a factory mm -hmm. 1022 magazine, uh, you bought a, a three pack of it, and this is great for, like I said, for competition, steel challenge or just taking your young one out because mm -hmm. you can push this thing all the way in and an eight-year-old boy can mm -hmm. actually hold this and be lightweight enough mm -hmm. for a boy or a girl to go to the range and shoot. This will be great. Yeah. So, yeah. Marty, we did a great job here. Um, great setup. Now with a compensator, we're going to shoot it with a comp and see if it makes a difference. <laughs> I. It, it will do some sort of difference mm -hmm. because this was set up by Alchin, who's a, a great parts manufacturer mm -hmm. in California, and he's been doing competition for years. I met John 20 or something years ago shooting USPSA here in town, and he was making parts for race guns back then. Mm -hmm. Now he's, because of the that new league of rimfire shooting. Okay. Uh, that has been going around. I've been going to those matches for a while and just for photography and all that, but it's, they're fun. They're really fun. And we can shoot five or six stages with rimfire, have a good meal and hang out with good friends. What else do you need? Yeah, You know. good times. Yeah, it's great times. But Marty, thank you very much for putting this uh, carving rifle together for me and showing how, it's, how easy it is mm -hmm. to do it. So like always, folks, please, Remain healthy, stay safe, and definitely have fun at the range. Thank you for watching Gunstock Reviews. Please visit our website at www.gunstockreviews.com for more exclusive content. Please visit our patron page at www.patreon.com slash gunstockreviews. Your contributions would be greatly appreciated and help us grow our selections and frequency of videos.